Hey everyone, I hope that you guys are doing well. Welcome to another video. Uh, I am currently in Italy. Uh, I have been here for a little over a month, but prior to coming to Italy, I, uh, I spent about a week in Sweden. I was there for uh, a friend's wedding. And so I left uh, LAX, Los Angeles International Airport, uh, on a Wednesday at about 2.30 p.m. And I arrived the following day at about maybe 7.30, a little after 7.30 p.m. Uh, in the evening. Now the flight from Los Angeles International Airport to the Arlanda International Airport, it's not a short one, but this particular flight was even longer. It was a lot longer than it had to be. There were problems with the airplane. And then there was an issue with the layover in Helsinki. All of this just to say that uh, by the time that I got there, I was exhausted and the jet lag was completely, I mean, had just completely wiped me out. I was hungry. But because I was there for a friend's wedding, I had actually reached out to another friend and we decided that we would uh, be travel partners for this, uh, this weekend. And we booked a hotel very close to the Irlanda International Airport. Uh, when I got there, he wasn't there, uh, so I called him up. Uh, he got there the day before I did. He was like, yeah, I'm, I'm in Stockholm. Why don't you come down, uh, bring your camera if you want. We'll walk around, we'll explore the city, and um, we'll grab something to eat. My initial reaction was like, no way, I, I need to go to bed. Intuitively, I could sense that I wasn't going to be in Stockholm or I wasn't going to have a lot of time uh, to spend in Stockholm. So I figured, you know what, I'll take advantage of this opportunity. So I put my bags down, I grabbed the XE4 with a 27 millimeter 2.8 lens. And I was just gonna take that because I was convinced at that point that I would shoot exclusively with that camera for the rest of the trip. But because I did take my XF10 and because it fits in my pocket, I grabbed it and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Anyways, an hour and 15 minutes later, uh, I arrived to the Stockholm train station, met up with, uh, with my friend Jogen, and uh, we walked around for a little bit uh, before having dinner. Anyways, here is the first segment. Okay, so uh, I'm not exactly super proud of those images, but I figured that I'd share them with you um, because they were important in that they were kind of, uh, there was the first step in the right direction on this trip in regards to photography. Um, the following morning, uh, Yogan and I, uh, you know, checked out and uh, we hopped on a train and went to Kanifsta. Uh, and at that point, uh, another friend picked us up and drove us to the cottage. Uh, where this wedding was going to take place out in the countryside somewhere i don't remember what the name of this place was we were there all day friday all day saturday and most of sunday yogan and i had discussed even if we have to pay a little bit more let's book a hotel um, in stockholm um, so that we could explore the city because we were only going to have monday uh, to explore the city then after that he was going to take off 
uh, and I was going to take off in a different direction. So that's what we did. All of the images from this point on, these are all from this one outing. There's three more segments that I want to share with you. So here's the first of uh, these three segments. Yogan uh, also had a Sony A7 with him with a 24 to 70 uh, millimeter lens on it. And, you know, I was talking to him about street photography that entire weekend. You know, we talked about street photography, about the importance of documenting history, the importance of like um, documenting the little moments and how pictures become more valuable as time goes by. And um, he had been uh, taking pictures as well. So it wasn't just me. That was amazing. Uh, Yogan is a really great travel partner um, from the perspective of traveling, but also he turned out to be a great travel partner from the perspective of creativity. So the only thing was, it was that we would be walking and uh, I would have the XE4 on a camera strap and he had his A7 on a camera strap and people would see these two guys walking in their direction and it seemed like we were making a lot of the same photographs. I haven't seen the pictures that he took because um, after that he went to California and then I came to Italy. Um, but it seemed like at a certain point he maybe perhaps, and I'll ask him this when I, uh, when I see him, when I go back to California, but it seemed like he started to perceive the same thing. He started to kind of shift off to one side and I would shift to the other side. We didn't really talk about it. It just kind of happened naturally. And we would both walk on different sides of the street. At that point, I felt like the photos began to shift for me, the types of images that I was making. Um, but as I looked at this segment when I was editing it, I could see the difference in the photographs from where we were walking side by side to where we split up. Uh, maybe you'll be able to notice it as well. <laughs> Anyways, here it is.
This was the first of many outings that I would take. Uh, not in Sweden. In Sweden, that was the only outing in the city. But here in Italy, I've gone out to the city several times. Each time, it seems like I've had an insight that has made me grow as a photographer. As a person as well, but also as a photographer. The insight that I had on this particular day, which I think is the takeaway of this video, if you're looking for some value as to something that could maybe help you with your photography. I've talked about shooting from a place of intuition and how I really try to get into that zone where I just shoot from intuition. That is absolutely 100% still the case now. In fact, it's gotten easier to get into that zone. But one of the things that I realized was that I'm now starting to preload my intentions before I go out. So, so sometimes I watch videos of these people who break down famous photographs and they break it down and it takes them like 45 minutes to break down this photograph. The photographer took it in like seconds probably. And so that's been very hard for me to reconcile. And I realize I don't know what it was like for those photographers, but I realize that sometimes if I preload my intentions, if I'm thinking about human interaction, uh, if I'm curious and hungry to know a different culture or if I am want to bathe myself in a different type of diversity than what I'm used to fashion and then I just go on the streets and when I can couple preloaded intentions with intuition then happy accidents will take place or they're more likely to take place uh, like take this image for example I don't remember making this image I didn't frame the image in a specific way or try to compose it exactly like this. I don't even remember somebody doing karate kicks or kicking up in the air uh, in the middle of the street, in the middle of a promenade. And yet it happened. And it's a, it's a photograph that I, <laughs> I find it interesting. I like it. Um, that being said, that was the takeaway for me. And I felt that I would share it with you. We're almost done with today's episode. I have one more segment that I'm going to share with you. At this point, we have been walking around for, for a few hours. And here is the last segment. In fact, I think my favorite photograph from this outing is coming up in this next segment. Uh, I hope that you guys are doing well. I wish you guys a great morning, afternoon, or evening. And here is the last segment. Enjoy. So uh, we've been walking around for, how long have you been walking around, Jürgen? Uh, for like three hours. What, three hours, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, we so we've been walking around for like three hours and um, we're heading back to the hotel so I probably won't take a lot of shots with this camera and this lens but um, uh, yeah here are the ones that I do catch all right guys all right 